Understanding death. The departed do not vanish but remain with us like the living. Hello everyone, I am Pulkit Mathur, founder of The Spiritual Bee and in this second video of our three-part series on understanding death, we shall visit the next set of five truths about death which have been revealed by the God-realized Rishis of Advait Vedanta. Now to briefly recap, in the previous video of this series, we learned that death is only for the outer physical body. Since the soul is not made from matter, since it is spiritual being comprised of consciousness, therefore the laws of matter of destruction and disintegration do not affect the soul. The soul is a deathless, changeless and eternal reality which survives the death of the physical body. Death for the soul is merely a change of form. From the gross form, it transitions to the subtle. Just as we change our clothes, similarly, at the time of death, the soul takes off the coat of the gross physical body and journeys on clothed in the inner subtle body or sukshma sharir. Now, after this, the next and the sixth truth to learn about death relates to its cause. Death, as the sages tell us, has many causes, some of which are quite subtle and can be discerned only by adept yogis. These subtle causes range from the prana or the life force in the body having gotten exhausted to the soul having finished learning the lessons it had planned out for this life, to the working out of some karmic destiny. Many times, though not always, subtle causes such as these become the drivers of outer events such as illnesses and accidents that bring about the death of the physical body. When the soul has performed certain functions, enjoyed certain pleasures and fulfilled certain desires, it finds that this gross physical body is no longer of any use and it does not work right. Then the living soul leaves the gross body and manufactures another. Just as you have run a motor machine for two years and after two years, you find that the parts are worn out and that it has done its service, then you leave it and get another. That is exactly what the living soul does. You cannot blame the soul for doing that because the body is the instrument through which the soul must manifest its powers, gain experiences, learn lessons and gather knowledge. In this way, the living soul is progressing in the process of evolution, rising from a lower to a higher state and fulfilling its mission at every step of manifestation. Swami Abhedananda in his book Life Beyond Death Most people die before the vitality that is the life force of the body is exhausted. It is due to many causes of which one is the destiny prepared by past lives, another is the inner purpose or utility of the present life being completed, but these are subtle and secret reasons. Accident, violence or other causes are only the exterior machinery. Sri Aurobindo in his book Letters on Yoga 1 Vai's early death with much suffering may have been the result of past influences or they may have been chosen by her own psychic being that is her inner self as a passage towards a higher state of consciousness for which she was not yet prepared but towards which she was moving. Her early death coupled with the non-fulfillment of her capacities would have been a final tragedy if this had been her only life alone. As it is, she has passed towards the psychic sleep to prepare for her next life to come. Sri Aurobindo in Letters on Yoga 1 You can explain to X that the death of his nephew was part of his own karma. Each person has his own destiny and follows its line. To be in a certain family and with certain relations is only a temporary incident in its course. The sadhak should be free from these attachments and regard these happenings as ordeals to be passed through with equanimity of mind and faith in the divine, doing his best for those who are in his charge but not being disturbed by the results. Sri Aurobindo in Letters on Yoga 1 Moving on to the seventh truth about death, this truth is that after we die, we meet up with our departed friends and family and talk things over. This fact has been related by Sister Nivedita, a direct disciple of Swami Vivekananda who writes, Some things, however, were noticeable. He, that is Swami Vivekananda, appeared to share the common assumption that after death we meet again and talk things out, so to speak, with those who have preceded us. When I stand before the old man, that is before Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Vivekananda would say with a smile of whimsical tenderness, I must not have to tell him so and so. Nor did I ever see in him any struggle against this assumption. He appeared to take it simply as one of the facts of life. Sister Nivedita recounting in her book The Master as I saw him. In the same book, Sister Nivedita goes on to write, 
to those who believe in our master swami vivekananda as a competent witness these words of his will have their own value these sadhaks will understand that even where he has expressed what is only an inference only an opinion that it is yet an opinion based upon the unique opportunity of experience swami vivekananda who had attained to the plane of nirvikalpa samadhi that is to the plane of experiencing oneness with god had passed through many psychological conditions on the way correspondent to disembodiment he was accessible during such phases to many experiences from which we are ordinarily debarred now the next and the eighth truth to discover about death is that the departed continue to watch over their loved ones like guardian angels modern spiritualism which consists of establishing contact with departed spirits has demonstrated the fact that the spirits of our dead friends and relatives are anxious to inform us that they are comfortable and that they take great interest in our mundane affairs and are always ready to direct us in the right path and help us by giving good counsels like guardian angels they watch over their beloved ones and are always anxious to protect them from the dangers and misfortunes that surround their earthly lives swami abhedananda in life beyond death proceeding onwards to the ninth truth about death this truth is that the dead are as much here with us as the living many times we feel that the dead have traveled to some far off heaven and now we can never be near them again this is a fallacy of our thinking because after death a person sheds his physical body and remains clothed in the subtle body or sukshma sharir this subtle body is nothing but the mind so after death a person lives in a mental world it is not a physical world where things are separated from each other by distance such as the earth is from mars the dead do not journey to any far off place in the universe instead they remain right here with us immersed in a mental world and remain connected with us through the mind that is through our thoughts man must conquer this illusion and know that the dead are here beside us and with us as much as ever it is their absence and separation that are a myth swami vivekananda's reaction upon hearing the news of his close friend mr goodwin's passing away as recorded by sister nivedita in her book wanderings with swami vivekananda i have not passed away i have merely gone from one room to another shri ramakrishna's words to his wife shardama in a vision after his death shardama has related that after shri ramakrishna's passing when she tried to remove her bracelets as was the social custom dictated to widows of her time she had a vision of shri ramakrishna in which he said these words according to her whenever she thought of dressing like a widow she had a vision of shri ramakrishna asking her not to do so at death it is not that we suddenly get transformed and grow wings but it is a continuity of this present life life after death means the continuity of this life only on another plane but it is not a place there is no space relation at present we are living in three dimensions where we have the knowledge of length breadth and height but we do not know all these things after death there is no space relation it is like a wheel within a wheel just as you can hear the vibrations of different musical instruments one can be of low vibration and another of high and both can exist without interfering with each other at the same time you can hear both similarly around this earth is a spirit world it is like the fourth dimension it is on another plane swami abhedananda in life beyond death so the dead coexist with us only we cannot see them what's more since the minds of all living beings are connected with each other and contained within the universal mind like fruit stacked in a bowl therefore the thoughts of near and dear ones reach the departed constantly who after death reside in this mental world it is keeping in view this tenth truth about death that the funeral ceremonies such as shraddha or shraddh are prescribed in hinduism so that through thoughtful acts of remembrance and devotion the departed can derive peace and comfort in the afterlife as we have discussed in the help i'm scared of ghosts video after death the disembodied spirits usually remain earth bound for some time this is because the memories and attachments of the life left behind are still fresh in their minds so when family members sincerely pray for their rest and well-being it provides the deceased with strong mental and emotional support with the help of which they can overcome their earth centric preoccupations and worries and transition to a state of rest 
The prayers, good thoughts and kirtan or devotional singing can be of invaluable assistance to the dead. Prayers act on the principle of a radio station and broadcast the waves of good thoughts just as a radio station broadcasts waves of sound. Immediately after death, the departed souls remain in a state of swoon or unconsciousness. They cannot feel that they are detached from their previous gross material bodies. Prayers, kirtan and good thoughts from relatives and friends create a potent vibration and an awakening in their stupefied condition of mind and bring back their veiled consciousness. The souls begin to realize that they are not really in their gross material bodies. Then they endeavor to cross the borderland, a narrow river of ether which is known as Vaitarani by the Hindus, Chinavat bridge by the Parsis and Sirat by the Muslims. Prayers are thus a mighty force which help the departed souls in their progress towards heaven and their quiet passage through the intermediate state. Swami Sivananda in what becomes of the soul after death. The good thoughts and the good deeds of the living help the departed spirits in obtaining release from the earthbound condition. We can help the spirits more than they can help us because they are nearer to our thought realm. If we send them a good thought, we are helping them because thought is a product of the mind and the departed souls remain in the mental world and so thoughts can easily reach them. So if we do any good act in their name and if we concentrate our mind with the thought that the result of this good work will go to them to help them in their onward progress to a state of mental well-being, peace and rest in the afterlife, we are doing good to them. Swami Abhedananda in Life Beyond Death On the other hand, as we have discussed in the Help I am Scared of Ghosts video, if the departed see their family members collapsing under the weight of grief, then it pains them deeply and they feel utterly helpless to do anything. And on account of this worried mental state, they find it difficult to fall into a restful sleep. The weeping, mourning and the uncontrolled grief of relatives give the departed souls pain and drags them down from their astral planes. It produces serious injury to them and may even seriously retard their journey to the heaven world to a state of peace and calm. When they are sinking peacefully, they are aroused into vivid remembrance of the mundane life by the weeping and wailing of their friends and relatives. The mournful thoughts of relatives produce similar vibrations in the minds of the departed and produce acute pain and discomfort. Therefore, relatives and friends should remain calm and composed at the time of a loved one's passing and should do kirtan and prayers for the peace of the departed souls. Then only they can really help and comfort them. If 10 or 12 persons sit together and do kirtan and prayer, it will be decidedly more powerful and effective. Collective prayer and kirtan exercise a tremendous influence. Swami Sivananda in what becomes of the soul after death. So too much grief at a loved one's passing is discouraged by the rishis of Vedanta. The spiritual and mental well-being of the one who has passed must always be kept foremost in mind and with that view we must try to bear our loss with the utmost courage and equanimity of mind and prevent our thoughts from flowing in streams of sadness and grief. Now we shall explore this truth about minimizing grief in more detail in the third and last video of our Understanding Death series. As always, thanks for watching and goodbye.